Dr. Sharif Sahadullah, the group CEO of Kim's Healthcare Group, has very evolved perspectives on healthcare industry, which apart from being forward-looking, are well-grounded too. One of the ideas he espouses is the adoption of technology. Kim's is a top-notch healthcare group with footprints across South India and GCC countries. The group has a total of 20 hospitals and medical centers with 1,800 beds available at the service of patients. Kim's has always been quick to adopt and align to technological changes. However, Dr. Sharif says that Kim's became the name it is today because it chose to stay true to the purpose of service and care to the patient. Dr. Sharif is here to talk more on the Kim story and its interplay and occupation with a beast called technology. Um, I apologize. I'm starting to lose my voice. Uh, so bear with me. I may struggle a little bit uh, through the course of the, the morning. Um, I was at a uh, uh, athletics and soccer tournament uh, for my son over the weekend in Dubai. They had a uh, mini Olympics of uh, schools from around the uh, Middle East uh, and he was participating in a lot of the events and uh, they won the soccer tournament and uh, they won the overall uh, cup uh, and so I'm not one of those parents who sits at quietly at the uh, sidelines I'm, I'm a real yeller and screamer and uh, I, I lost my voice I almost got a yellow card in the soccer game because I uh, went out onto the field, so uh, bear with me uh, while I go through the day. I, hope I may have to shorten my speech because my voice is <clears throat> breaking a little bit. Uh, technology is a huge uh, topic and uh, uh, there's a lot that can be said about the interplay of technology in the healthcare uh, system. So when I, when I was asked to give this talk, uh, I, uh, I was... Um, you know, I asked the NVIDA team, and I want to thank the NVIDA team for inviting me here uh, today to speak. It's my first time here, and it's a pleasure to be here, and especially on, on Republic Day. Uh, I think in probably the last 30 years this is the first Republic Day I've been uh, in India, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So uh, they said, why don't you talk about EHR or electronic health record and, and, or EMR? Uh, electronic medical record and the Kim's journey in that and I said okay but then as as I went along I thought you know how boring uh, why would uh, some you know people want to sit and, and listen to me speak for 20 30 minutes on uh, the uh, EMR I will uh, I will touch on that and our journey to uh, achieving a hundred percent or at least close to a, a hundred percent uh, compliance with our uh, EMR but the real question is, you know, what's next? Um, I think, oh, so this is, oops. Uh, for those who don't uh, know Kim's, uh, this is our uh, main hospital in uh, Trivandrum. Uh, it's 650 beds where you see the parking lot. Uh, this is actually an old picture. Uh, there's another 250 bed tower coming up, so it'll be about 900 beds. And, and we have uh, several hospitals in India, uh, as well as uh, five countries uh, in the Middle East. So that's a little bit about us. So when I talk about medical informatics, uh, we touch on EMR, an electronic medical record, uh, or EHR, electronic health record, CPOE, which is computerized physician order entry, LIS, which is a lab system, uh, RIS, radiology, and, and PACS, which is picture archiving. Uh, but before we go on, I just want to get a sense from the crowd. Uh, how many of you work in uh, a hospital setting or a healthcare delivery setting? Can I just get a show of hands? Okay, so a decent number. Keep your hands up. Uh, how many of you uh, in your hospitals or medical facilities, wherever you work, have an electronic medical record? Okay, still a good number, most hands are still up. How many of you uh, would say that you have a compliance 
of over 90% on your CPOE, on your computer physician order entry. No, less, less hands up, few hands remaining. How many of you would say you're actually happy with your EMR or EHR? One person. So maybe I'll have to ask you afterwards what system you use. As you notice, my hand went down. Okay, so one of the things is that technology is rapidly evolving and healthcare has been behind in a lot of ways in adapting certain technologies. So when it comes to medical technology, I think healthcare is great. So we've seen robotics and what robotics can do. Uh, everyone wants the highest Tesla CT, uh, MRI or you know, the higher sliced uh, CT. So there's a lot of uh, technology that can be uh, implemented in terms of healthcare delivery. But in a lot of ways, as a service industry, we're behind in uh, adapting technology. A couple of years ago, I was at a VC conference in Mumbai, and I was a panelist there. And I was asked, or one of my colleagues uh, on the panel was asked the question, um, what is the greatest uh, impediment to implementing technology? What's your greatest obstacle in Im impl implementing technology? Sorry, I haven't slept. Uh, implementing technology uh, in a healthcare delivery system. And uh, they said the doctor. So as a practicing physician, I was up in arms and I had to uh, come to the defense uh, of my uh, colleagues. But I think one of the things that we have to realize in that statement is that, you know, hospitals around the world have taken probably the most academically trained person in your hospital, uh, the revenue generator for your hospital, uh, and you know one of the highest paid people in your hospital and to some extent we've made them inefficient by implementing technology that's probably what your doctors will tell you but to some degree that's true uh, as well especially when it comes to topics like uh, electronic medical record or, or, or EHR you know technology is great when it works for us uh, but not when we have to work for technology. And I think the thing I've realized, you know, I've, I've seen dozens of, more than dozens, hundreds of demos on different EMRs uh, from when I was in the U.S. to uh, here in India and in the Middle East. Um, and you know, they cover the entire spectrum. Um, unfortunately, some of them are just what you would do on paper. They've just put it in a uh, electronic uh, format. Really the advantage of an EHR is the ability to not only store and transmit de data and, and patient information but really to compute it and compute it uh, effectively. So I, I should probably change the slide. So one of the things in healthcare delivery in general that we need to be aware of uh, and any initiative that we uh, make is the first uh, line, which is primum non nocere, which is Latin. This is actually the first thing that we were taught when I, when I went to med school uh, in Boston. I, I uh, walked into the classroom on the first day and this is what was up on the board. And, I looked around and, and made sure no one else knew what it was because I had no clue. And, but what it means is that, uh, above all, do no harm. And so any initiative, we should always keep that in mind. Uh, but we use technology or EMR to improve uh, the quality of patient care and safety, uh, to streamline hospital operations, uh, facilitate process standardization and enable growth uh, both volume and revenue and, and uh, so forth. So let me tell you a little bit about you know, my EHR journey and my EMR journey and why I have said that uh, we are making doctors inefficient in our current model of uh, how we do EMR. 
So I started uh, my clinical practice at the VA. The VA is the Veterans Administration. It's in the U.S. It's a healthcare system uh, for veterans uh, of the American military. And it was actually one of the first systems to implement an electronic health record uh, for patients. Uh, so one fine morning, uh, I love the, the patients at uh, the VA. Uh, they're very grateful for the care you provide. There's a lot of pathology there, unfortunately, because of comorbid conditions. And uh, I had a great relationship with uh, my patients. Uh, and one fine morning, the hospital said, okay, we're gonna implement an EHR, and they put a big uh, computer uh, in the room, and, and uh, this is sort of what I uh, felt like. So I had to balance out, because we weren't given any training, really, on, on how to do this. I had to balance out how do I talk to my patient and how do I enter uh, data uh, at the same time. And uh, so this, this became a little bit of a, a struggle for me. But don't get me wrong, and I, I suspect for those of you that work in healthcare institutions that a lot of your doctors are complaining of the same thing, that uh, I can't do this efficiently while I have to enter data, and to, to some large degree, uh, that's true. But there are clearly benefits to having and an EMR and uh, EHR. I've explained in a very short time of 20 minutes the real grounded state-of-the-art practical implication of using digital information in real time phase either in outside India or it came to Andrew. We really appreciate sir. You have made our life very simple. He said with this the doctors will get a lot of time, patients will have we made their life very easy and customer experience is achieved. That's what every healthcare institution is looking for. Thank you very much indeed. I call upon one of my best friends here in this auditorium, John, COO of Anvitar Tools to Health, to come to the dais to honor our guest. Welcome, sir. Give a big hand. I think I had a lot more hair in this picture that they showed <laughs> earlier. That's probably the stress of being a CEO. I think Ashok said that uh, CEOs last for only one or two years uh, in a healthcare organization. I, I thought it was four years, and I thought at least I had another year or two, uh, but I guess my time may be up soon. So anyway, thank you. I, I like your answer. <laughs>